What it do, Dream Team? It's your boy D Neil back with another reaction video, guys. Here we are with F1 drivers explain F1. I'm excited to jump into this. We've heard uh, F1 explained in a different kind of video, but it wasn't by a driver. This is from the driver perspective. So this is different. So I'm intrigued at what he's got to say. Before we jump into this, make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. Ring the notification bell. Give the video a thumbs up so it gets suggested. Social media and Patreon, all up top. You can subscribe to any of it. Put all the links in the description. All you got to do is hit the link. Follow, talk to Pewman. I talk back. Uh, if you guys got a favorite video suggestion, you can subscribe to Patreon or drop it in the comment section. Well, we got it. Why is a weekend three days? Mainly because in Formula One, it's a bit of a classic to have three days. Uh, we use Friday as a free practice day. So three days we have on the race weekend, we just have three hours of practice on the Friday. Generally, when you get to a track, you just need time to, to learn about the car, what the, about the track, about the conditions. We divide the weekend into three parts. Here we would practice, here we would qualify, here we would race. We use this day to learn everything we can about the, the car and the track. Saturday is really about um, refining the changes you made in practice in the morning, yeah, qualifying for position to where you start in the race. We use this day to exploit the maximum we can out of our machines to qualify as best possible for race day that is the important day. You can definitely do it all in one day. Um, there's not enough time or energy. Practice is very important to prepare qualifying, but also to prepare mainly the race. Definitely, you definitely got to get out on the track. Definitely got to get the feel for the car. See if there's any adjustments that need to be made uh, during practice. Get the feel for the track. Learn that more. And then the car on qualified day, practice a little bit in the morning. Then, I mean, you, you're trying to qualify for whatever position you're going to be in when the race starts. So you, you obviously want to be in the, the best position possible. And then race day, put put everything to the test. Okay, okay. I'm Qualifying, so but also to prepare mainly the race. F1 points are awarded by the position, obviously. And if you win a race, you get 25 points. The biggest gap between the points is um, in the higher positions. So from second to third um, is, is quite a big gap as well. But then it gets closer and if you finish 10th, you get one point. So F1 points are awarded to the cars that finish in the top 10 positions. So starting with first place down to 10th, you get 25 points and 18, 15, 12, 10, 8, 6, 4, 2 and 1. And we also have a point for the fastest lap of the race. Valtteri Bottas is going for the fastest lap. To gain that, sometimes you might need to compromise your strategy put fresh tires at the end of the race when you have less fuel in the car, when the car is lighter. So you might try and, and go for it, but there's always a bit of a risk doing that. Winner gets 25 probably. Uh, second, 18, 15, um, and from there, 10th get one and everybody can come. <laughs> he talking like I usually don't end up outside of third place, so I I, I don't, outside of third place, I don't, I don't know what the points are, but 25, 18, 15, and then 10th is one point. I, I usually end up in that top three, which is why I know those numbers. Uh, no, just, but that's, that's, that's kind of how it was. Uh, but I definitely understand it. So uh, definitely point system is, in, uh, is important. And then fastest lap, you get a point for having the fastest lap. And I like it, it said, uh, so less fuel, you put on fresh tires, the car is lighter. I, it's just stuff that I wouldn't necessarily think about. Uh, all the strategies and techniques and everything that they use. Uh, I think that's incredible. And from there, tend to get the one and everybody can come. Sectors on the track are made for us to basically cut the track in a few sections. So it's clearer to us where we are losing time or where we are gaining time. Most of the tracks have three sectors in Formula One. If we draw Barcelona very quickly here, it goes like that, like that. It's very poor, eh? but uh, basically you divide it into three. You have the first chicane and, and, and turn three. You have the second sector and then you have the third sector. First sector, basically we call it the, the fast sector because you have a whole long straight and a very fast corner that is flat out. The second sector becomes a bit uh, twistier and medium speed corners and the third sector is actually pretty slow. So it just 
easier for everyone to say, okay, he has something happening in sector one, or he has something happening in other sectors. And it helps the teams basically to divide the performance of their own car to, to learn in which type of corner you can, you can improve. Mm. Why are you laughing, man? I look like, I feel like an idiot. <laughs> No, I, I do love the way they're breaking this down. I do love the way they're breaking this down because they're making it easy to understand. You understand it's split into three sectors. And when, because it's split into three sectors, you can look at, at each sector and see where there's where improvements can be made and everything. You understand which sector you can go super fast on. And then you have to go at a little bit of a slower speed to get around some of these corners and everything. Uh, I, I, it just makes it very, they're, they're, they're explaining it very well. Man, I look like, I feel like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> An apex is how do you even explain it? It's funny as a driver you just do things that don't really but okay so let's use this one. Uh, so the apex is the point of the corner where you want to like close the corner to then give you the best trajectory to exit the corner in the fastest ways. An apex is the point you gotta reach in the middle of the corner which is most of the time at the apex. Yeah, the apex like around the curb. Um, so yeah, middle of the corner, basically there and there. An apex, I'm gonna draw you here on this lovely whiteboard. So we've got the racing car here and I'll draw the racing line, which is from the outside of the track, hits him inside of the corner before running wide to the exit of the corner again. The apex is the most central and the slowest part of the corner, but you never know where the grip is, sometimes it could be more like this, this could be late apex, early apex. You want to come out a little bit higher up top to then flow through apex somewhere here and then come out like that. And that'll give you a, a trajectory where you can come late into the corner and kind of slingshot out. So that is what we call an Actually, apex, the yeah. point where we kind of close the corner. And the apex is described at the point of which you hit the inside of the track. So we often describe it, you know, hitting the apex around the corner and most most of the times the more apexes you hit, the better it is. There could be many different angles of doing this corner depending on uh, your car setup and uh, wind direction and, and so on. I just learned something. No, I, I love that there's multiple, it's not just one race car. Or, or racer explaining it it's there, there's multiple guys all explaining these things and so even if maybe you don't understand the way one person explains it you might understand the next person uh but that's apex is dope hold on hold on keep it cool and i might have to get into some more f1 videos your car setup and uh, wind direction and, and so on i just learned something myself actually <laughs> or confused myself even more i don't know and the steer is when you turn and the um, car doesn't turn, basically. Uh, it's the front tire side. It's when you're, you know, you're turning and the car stop, the, the rear of the car often pushes the car forwards and um, it's just not, the, the car's not rotating at the, at the rate in which you're putting the angle in. Generally drivers oh, wow. don't like understeer. I think in a general thing, I think road cars that you drive will have a lot of understeer because it's very safe. Um, but a quick car generally is oversteery, so you need the car to be reactive um, because that way you can carry the most speed through a corner. Understeer and oversteer, the two most famous words in an engineering debrief. Uh, understeer is when the car uh, is not responding to the amount of steering lock that, um, that, you, are, um, that you are winding on. Um, it's when the car understeers, oh, so you have, you're demanding more steering lock for the amount of front end that you want. Understeer is when you turn the steering wheel into a corner and the front of the car is sliding. So the car is, is going straight more than you want to. And uh, oversteer is the opposite, is that when you turn the steering wheel, the rear end slides and the car turns more than, than you want it to. If you ever watch Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift, that is oversteer. Um, so the front, let's say if the trajectory of the car is doing this, let's say you're kind of, that's kind of what I mean, the uh, front and rear wheels uh, following the line. The rear wheels would go, let's say past the slip angle, past the line, and uh, 
tends to have been that the rear is losing grip. So uh, when we complain about oversteer, will generally mean that the rear is moving too much um, and it's moving out of line. So uh, so is it kind of is it is it kind of he said kind of if you watch like Fast and Furious Top Gear drift that's, that's kind of what it is. So it's kind of like drifting, where your your car is just kind of drifting, or is that is that oversteer? That's that's kind of what it sounds like from the way he explained. It. Understeer, yeah, it sounds bad because you're trying to make this turn and the cars the front of the car is not turning how you want it to turn. And so it is, it's kind of going off to the, it's kind of going straight when you're trying to turn. Uh, but oversteer, oof, I can, the back of your car, yeah, oversteer doesn't sound fun either. Yeah, understeer and oversteer both sound terrible. Steer will generally mean that the rear is moving too much um, and it's moving out of line. So, uh, yeah, you'll often see spins where we get a snap of oversteer and oh, we, wow. uh, we do this. Um, insert one of my crashes. The oversteer Jeez. would be come into the corner a bit too fast perhaps and you maybe have this kind of moment when you when the rear slides and you have to make a correction because the rear if you don't make a correction then you're going to then you're going to spin. An oversteer is when you turn and it turns too much and usually overpowers the rear so the rear steps out and you have to correct. Yeah, I have a funny story. Um, there was a Japanese driver um, who I used to race against in GP3 and I convinced him, he didn't know many, much English, so I convinced him, convinced him that oversteer was understeer and understeer was oversteer. So for the first test, he was complaining about oversteer when he meant understeer and it was understeer. Yeah. Anyway, I thought that was quite a funny joke, but apparently it wasn't that funny. Lock up is when you basically break too hard and you exceed the amount of grip available. So the tire basically stops and locks and it like and you kind oh, of wow. uh, get smoke because of the rubber and the friction, I guess, on the tarmac. So it, it's basically when you brake too hard. Formula One uh, lockups is something that you see quite a lot on TV. You see drivers finding the limit of the front tires and it means that you're always trying to keep both axles and the maximum deceleration trying to slow the car as much as possible but normally when you lock up it's because you've applied too much brake pressure for the grip available and the tire just stops. So lock up uh, is basically happens when you brake because we don't have uh, an anti-locking brake system like you do on your road cars so basically if I use this little demonstration here the wheels turning as you're going down the straight and when you brake as opposed to it kind of decelerating while it's still turning it kind of stops turning and you just pretty much go straight like that and you basically can flat spot the part of the tire where it stops rotating and it could create quite a big vibration while you're driving. You do a lockup yeah. and the tire is not rounded anymore. You've taken off a piece of tire oh, wow. because it's been rubbing against the asphalt. Once you have one lockup, then every time you start braking, it's very, it's very easy to hit mm. this part of the tire and keep locking it up. So you start taking even more Part of the tire and then that makes complete sense that that makes complete sense i, I understand that now you got you got to go into the pit you see like after a lockup it's pit time it you, so you start tires. taking even more part of the tire and then the next time you break it's easier to lock up again because the tire is more squared and you end up it's an exaggeration with a with a tire that is nearly squared and you need to pit because you have very little grip a lot of vibrations and it's nearly undrivable. If you lock up for too long, then the rubber on that point starts to get chewed up and you get what we call a flat spot after a lock up and then you get vibrations, which isn't fun. So a lock up is uh, breaking too hard, I guess that's the easiest way to say it. Hack for me is when uh, post-race or post-qualifying, uh, the scrutineers um, and the officials check the cars. Our team can't touch the car, can't touch any special parts of the car has to be checked like it is. The car cannot be touched by any member of the team or any, any fan. And to make sure that there's no cheaters, basically. I like it. Yeah, well, is it that, more or less? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> That's uh that was a dope explanation. I absolutely enjoyed that video. I felt like I come out definitely understanding a few more things about F1. 
Uh, I feel like uh, getting the F1 a little bit more and a little bit more and keep learning as I'm going, and then I'll be a full-fledged fan. But that's all we got for this one. If you guys got a favorite video you want to see me react to, you can subscribe to Patreon or in the description section. Uh, or, or you can comment the, uh, your subscribe. You can comment your suggestion down below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Ring the notification bell. Give the video a thumbs up so it gets suggested. Social media and Patreon, all up top. You can subscribe to any of you. Put all the links in the description. All you gotta do is hit the link. Follow me. Talk to me. Love talking to you guys. You guys are the most incredible team on YouTube. It's your boy, Daniel. Out.